more towards like when you come up with it. Like, so some people are real sensitive to it. And so I have people start around one milligram. And I, my kids take three milligrams. Both my teenagers love it. And they know like for big tests, they'll both do it. And they do it on their own now. But when you wake up in the morning, if you're still old, drugged, or feel hungover, it's too much. Um, some people do better on 0.5 or 1. Some people need 3. I have a patient that does 20. The studies on melatonin and uh, breast cancer reoccurrence are really phenomenal. So some of my breast cancer patients, I have on 20 to 30 milligrams of melatonin. Um, and they do, they tolerate it very well. It's so crazy. Like other things like anxiety or anything like that, is that just being too much as well? Of the melatonin? Yeah. I've never had anxiety as a result of too much melatonin. Would you say that? Diarrhea, maybe. No? I've been using a lot of CBD in my practice, uh, and I'm using it with melatonin sometimes or instead of. And it is phenomenal because it's anti inflammatory. It helps aches and pains. It helps sleep. It helps anxiety right there. I might try that instead. And I do micro doses for kids and for people with anxiety and depression, bigger doses for other things. It's amazing. Um, yeah, I'm really actually excited about that in the future. So what, do you do work the night shift? What do you do for yourself? Oh my gosh, I have some night shift nurses and some of my friends have done it in the past and I'm like, well, your exercise, sleep, and nutrition have to be on point. And then I think it's worth it to do melatonin cycling. Because what happens is you have days off. And then what happens, do you go to a day cycle because that's when your family's awake? You shouldn't, you should really just sleep. It's impossible, and I know it is. And so I try to use melatonin to kind of influence, like, okay, this is our rhythm today. Wake up, poor self, go to sleep. You know, it's tricky. If you do it all the time and it's consistent, it's better than switching shifts. I have police when they switch. That's even worse. So, Jennifer, um, I'm going to be 70 years old. Awesome. And, the front, and I used the bioidentical hormones uh, when I was then perimenopausal for probably 15 years, stopped because I didn't need them anymore. And I just want to say how amazing they were. No side effects, they were amazing, and I, I just can't say enough about, the, I'm such a proponent of bioidentical hormones, yes. and they were fantastic. And I just, I think that there's not enough Research that yeah, there's no money in it. You all understand. I know, and it's such an amazing thing for women that we um it's so easy. <coughs> I mean it's so easy. And they're not expensive, they're cheaper no. than the synthetics, no. just so you all know. And Becky does a great job with price and everything, but there's no study on it because there's no money in it, because every recipe is not patentable. And they were amazing because um you know Every time I needed to go back and do a study for my hormones to see what I needed, it, of course the insurance doesn't, didn't pay for it, but, but the compounding formula was like so cheap. Yeah, and cheap. all they did was just you know regulate the compounding um, formula. Yeah. And it was so much less than any prescription drug, and it was just amazing. And I'll say a little bit about that too. I think it's, like people are, yeah, it's, it's where you want to invest your money. You're going to pay regardless. Exactly. You be well. Doing, doing the hour day. day. And that's really the truth of it. Know your sources where you get things. Know your healthcare people. I, you know, I know when someone walks in and they're off. Know your people. You know, and really, where are your supplements bought from? Do they third party test them? Do they do they guarantee what's in them? Do they have gluten and all the fillers and dyes? Know what you're putting in your body from a from a lot of different ways. If you're sensitive or have different things, we can't come that out or not. But really, just you invest in your body and your health either way, ahead of time, preventatively, or on the the back side of the illness, and, and that's no fun. So I think it's empowering. What are you gonna do about it? What are you gonna do today to make one change? Just do something. <laughs> Jennifer, I, I don't wanna just take the floor, but I, I have another question, and it's a completely off the subject of, you know, what we're talking about today, but I just wonder if you um, have any thoughts about the relationship between hormones and mental illness. Oh my God, I could talk like two hours. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. 
I mean, I see it in my limit. I see depression. I see anxiety. I mean, I see all of these things. And I see men and women coming in on antidepressants and anti-anxiety meds. And I'm like, it's your hormones. And we do some hormonal things. And then maybe we try to do some weaning and get off. That's always the goal. Sometimes you get off one. Sometimes you get off both. I see it all the time. And I see it in teenagers a ton, too. Um, so, yes, there is a connection uh, for sure. I don't think it's the only thing, but it's definitely one thing to think about. Yeah. We appreciate you guys coming for sure. And just any, I mean, we'll be around and hanging out. Yeah. You can definitely ask questions or whatnot. We'll you can just ask questions. Just quick, brief, like hormonal testing, blood draws, spit test. What? How do you do it? I do all of the above. You know. Um, no, we've not done hormonal testing. Oh, well, we should. Other than five. Um, <laughs> um, I do all of the above, and it often depends on a patient's pocketbook and their insurance. If their insurance is going to pay for blood, I'll do blood because it's quick and easy, and it comes back. I'm good at reading them. I like saliva, but it takes two weeks to get results back, so if I'm in a hurry, sometimes I don't choose that. Sometimes it's convenient when a patient comes in on the, they're on day eight of their cycle because they're still bleeding, and I'm like, you have to do this on day 19 or 20. Well, that's a Saturday and Sunday. I'm not in my office drawing blood. Here, do this at home. Oh, okay. Um, I just say to be consistent. Like if you've done blood, stay with blood. If you've done saliva, stay with saliva. I send my own spit and blood in all the time and do doubles and I put a fake name on it. I make sure the lab is getting identical. And I switch labs multiple times because sometimes it doesn't come back right. But saliva's been pretty good lately, so I've been doing more and more of that. It's about, it's a little cheaper. It's 35 to $40 a hormone for saliva. So I do a really basic hormone panel. It's five hormones for 175, which is a bargain. Blood, they're about 50 bucks a piece. Some of them are more, but they average out to about 50 bucks. So they're actually a little more. Um, the codes are the same for insurance. The insurance doesn't know if we're doing saliva or blood. And so if insurance is gonna pay, they're gonna pay. Um, and the lab can bill your insurance if you want, or you can pay me and the lab bills me. I do either way. You're actually cheaper than having my insurance. Oh, yeah. I know. A lot, a lot of people say that. I charge you with the lab, lab charge scale, markup labs. And so if you have a deductible that's five grand and your hormones are gonna cost $600 through the lab, they'll cost 175 through me. Hello, no brainer. What's the difference between the uh, 24 hour urine test and the- I just lab? don't, I don't have a beef against it. Here, here's my personal thought. A lot of doctors do do the urine test. Um, what you're measuring is metabolites. Okay. So what your body is peeing out is how you're basing your hormones off of. Uh -huh. I just don't buy that. I've seen doctors flip flop. Oh, you're peeing out all your estrogen. Oh, you're peeing out because you have too much. Those are two totally different statements. And so I just don't do it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that some are better at reading it than others. Um, I just like black and white. Like these are the levels. It's going to be, here you go. So the Certainly saliva test, you, so you, you're more a proponent of saliva? Saliva or blood. Got saliva it. is intracellular. Yeah. And so that's cool. It's like what's inside the cell. It's been absorbed. Blood is what's circulating. We're not sure it's 100% been absorbed yet, but I think it's still better than what you're peeing out. Yeah. What if you have a kidney issue? What if you're dehydrated? Right, right. That's just my personal thought. I'm not saying it's right. It's just no, why. I, I, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. I'm curious, you said you had like a natural skincare brand. A couple of different brands I like. I well, there's a lot of them. I love Skin Food, and she's a whitefish gal. Okay. And she sells at uh, Sage and Cedar and maybe the Toggery. She, yeah, it's yeah. essential oils and no, skin care. Good skin care. Yeah. We have good stuff. Good, good stuff. And I like that too. Good they stuff. have one in there, the good stuff. I like Alba. I mean, there's a lot of brands you get at natural groceries even that are decent. You just look for all the crap that's in there and all the hormonal stuff. Um, yeah, I've been using skin food. I really like it. You know what they use in Europe is olive oil. Yeah. 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 Right? So, and you can eat that. <laughs> <laughs> Vinegar is pretty good. You don't need to wash your hair either. Yeah. Any other questions, guys? What about post hysterectomy for people? Like, do you, I have, like, medical, general medical world, it's easy to put. Sometimes it's up to people, I'm like, a little bit of hormone, what do you do about it? Depends on the age, in my opinion. Say they're 60 and have hysterectomy, which is weird, but say that happened, they're postmenopausal. Then it's like, how are your symptoms? What's going on? Do you have vaginal dryness? Do you have hot flashes? I might put them on hormones. But if you're 35 and have a hysterectomy, 
that's about as close as I come to full hormone replacement because at 35 you should have full hormones. Mm -hmm. And if they have one ovary and they only have, you know, they got one removed in a tube, I'm testing. Like, where are they? Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you can tell my symptoms. Oh, yeah, I haven't had a period since my surgery. Mm -hmm. There's no hormone. Then you put them on some hormone. Right. I guess a lot of people just end up on my table with like taste or sex or something like something like that. And I guess my question is, do do people need to be having some hormonal stuff with that as well? G giving people the best medicine, I think like getting better. If anyone doesn't know PJ, I'm PJ, she's a physical <laughs> therapist who's very amazing here in Whitefish. Mm -hmm. She's called the body mechanic. I've seen her personally. I recommend her a hundred times. Um, you have a different approach there, but if, if then I have painful sex, my opening is tight, I'm dry, that's hormonal, okay. right? And so if it's pelvic floor muscles, that's your area. I don't know a lot about that, but um, just say, you know. I guess you just didn't know, like, in tandem, like, should they be making sure all those things yeah. are apps? Like, hey, have you dealt with any, you know, cross your hormones right. or whatever? Because they shouldn't have me testing it. Right? They're having issues. MDs often don't test hormones okay. if you're postmenopausal or instantaneous directory. They'll say, You don't need a pack, you don't need anything. Tune in, see you later, here's your pros out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess um, you should inquire. Hey, have you ever thought maybe it could be your hormones? You know? You're floored sometimes. I've been doing this for so long and I'm just like, Sometimes a simple thing. I mean, I have so many women that are anemic that have, I mean, Nancy left, but she would account to this. That it's the simple things, not even the hard things, or the thyroid slow. It's so easy, and it hasn't been tested. So, I, you know, it's the whole the the what is it the zebra say the stripes before the zebra I don't know cart before the horse kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs>